Hello, my name is Brian Otis with Rice Tech Incorporated. Proper grain drill calibration is a very important aspect to getting off on the right foot each season. And with Rice Tech seed, that's no exception. As you know, we're dealing with lower than normal seeding rates, so it's very important to get your grain drill calibrated so that you, you get a good start each season. So today we're gonna go through calibrating three major types of grain drills. An air seeder like you see behind me, we're gonna go through a John Deere type box drill, and then finally we're gonna finish with a Great Plains type box drill. Okay, so I'm gonna go through basically your supply list of what you're gonna need for proper drill calibration. First thing you're gonna to need to do is look at your bag of seed or the piece of paper that comes with the mini bulk and find out what your seed per pound rate is. For this particular bag, we know that we've got 20,202 seed per pound. Okay, so what you're gonna do is divide that number into your seeding rate, which in the case, you know, depending on how many pounds of seed per acre, your number of seed per acre, you divide that number by the number on the bag. And when you do that, that's gonna give you the exact number of pounds per acre that you need to plant. Once you've determined the number of seeds per pound, either in our pre-planting newsletter that we send out annually, on our website at ricetech.com, you can get or you can download an Excel spreadsheet, which is our calibration worksheet, which works for any seed you want to plant in your grain drill. Works for rice tech seed, works for soybean seed. But you're going to need to know the number of seed per pound and the number of, or the pounds per acre of seed that you want to plant. You'll enter that number into our calibration worksheet and our worksheet will give you the proper amount of seed that you need to catch in the grain drill to ensure that you're properly calibrated. Now, on our website and in our pre-planning newsletter, we also provide basic starting points for each type of box grain drill, which based on previous experience of our field tech and tech reps out in the field, we've determined on Great Plains and John Deere drills a good starting point with each type of drill so that you can be in the ballpark at least from where you want to get started. Okay, so for supplies that you're going to need, First, you'll need a tape measure. You're gonna to need to measure the circumference of the gauge wheel or the transmission wheel that's actually turning the drill. Second, you're gonna need a ruler, and this will enable you to measure the cog so that you can get a very accurate measurement to, to, which meters the seed coming out of the drill. We recommend a, uh, a metal ruler in metric, so it's in centimeters and millimeters. Second, you'll need a calculator just to help you do some basic calculations. Although if you download the, the spreadsheet from our website, the Excel spreadsheet will do that for you. Uh, duct tape, you'll need duct tape to mark the transmission wheel because we will be making a number of revolutions with the gauge wheel or transmission wheel. This will just help you keep track of where you're at. Finally, and something that most people probably don't have, will be a small electric scale. In this particular case, you can use a postage scale, or this scale is just about, uh, just a standard electric scale that you can actually buy off the internet. Next, just a couple of uh, cups to help moving seed around in the drill to uh, measure seed out of the bag to pour into the drill. In order to measure the seed out of each of the, each of the seed cups under the box drill, you can either use individual cups to put under the cups, you can use the styrofoam cup as shown here, or a standard plastic solo cup. Or if you'd rather, you can use a catch, catch can, which you can catch several row units at one time, and then you can pour it out here at the end. So either, either one of these methods will work fine. And then finally, once you're calibrated, we've come up with these handy magnets that can, you can affix to the lid in the box, and you can write down your settings. So each year, when you come to recalibrate at the beginning of the year, you've got good starting points from where you were set last year so that in the following year, you'll know where to start and you can calibrate the drill on your own. Okay, we're gonna demonstrate proper calibration of a Great Plains type box drill. Okay, in order to get started, first you need to make sure that the drill is completely empty. All the seed cups have been cleaned out, but then have been moved back up to that first position. Then you can go to our website and get the approximate starting points for this type of drill. 
First thing you need to know on a Great Plains is to make sure that the transmission is in the lowest setting. So on this particular drill, this is a Great Plains 2020, we're gonna be in drive setting number one, or transmission setting number one. Then, because this is an eight inch model drill, we're gonna make sure that our notch setting is at number 60. Sometimes these drills have quite a bit of play. I'm gonna go all the way to zero and then move it to 60. Okay, now this is just gonna be an approximate starting point. From this point, we'll begin our calibration and then make small adjustments up or down depending on which way we need to go. Okay, the next step is to get a proper measurement of your gauge wheel. On this particular drill, there's two gauge wheels, one on each side that run the transmission. But we just need to measure one of them because typically they're the same. So the easiest way to do this is to get a tape measure and a piece of duct tape. Tape the tape measure to the gauge wheel in the center. Spin it around until it comes back and then get a measurement. This particular gauge wheel is seven foot, 11 and a half inches long. Okay, so we're gonna convert that into inches and then enter that into our, into our spreadsheet as our wheel circumference. Okay, once you get the circumference of your drive wheel, you can go online, download or get our spreadsheet off the internet and enter the circumference of the gauge wheel. You can also enter the number of seeds per pound, which on your bag or on your mini bulk is a listing of the number of seeds per pound for your particular lot of seed. You'll put that information in, and then you're gonna divide this number, number of seed per pounds, into the number of seeds per acre that you need to plant. That will in turn give you the number of pounds per acre that you need to plant. You'll plug that number into the spreadsheet, and it will give you the number of grams you need to catch from the predetermined number of row units and turns of the, of the gauge wheel. And when you get that number, then you'll know that you're properly calibrated. We're gonna come back to the back side of the drill and we've, we're gonna measure five seed cups. So with this particular drill, it's a lot easier to pull the tubes off of the row units than it is to pull the tubes down from the seed cups. So we've got this handy catch, catch can here. So what I'm gonna do is pull five of these drop tubes off so that they lay in this catch pan. If you choose to, you can also use solo cups or get some help here to just hold cups underneath these seed cups if you don't have a, a pan like this to use to catch the seed. Okay, once you've got your drop tube set and the drill's cleaned out, you're gonna need to go ahead and put some seed in only put enough seed in to cover the five row units that you're going to calibrate because it makes it a lot easier to make adjustments on the drill if only a few uh, seed cups are full. If the whole drill's full, it's nearly impossible to move the thing once it's been set. So what you'll do is just put enough seed in there to fill up the seed cup and do that for each of the row units that you're going to calibrate. Once you get the drill primed, all the seed cups are full of seed and you're ready to begin, Go ahead and empty your catch pan until there's no seed left, and then we can begin the calibration. Okay, once you get the drill primed and ready to go, you'll empty your seed pan or your seed cups, get them completely empty, put the tubes back in and get it ready to go. Now we're gonna turn the gauge wheel 15 times because our calibration worksheet has told us if we turn it 15 times, we need to catch so much seed for the, for the right weight or pound per acre that we're shooting for. So I'm gonna turn the wheel 15 times. Okay, once you get through with your 15 turns, before you get the weight of that seed, you've got to zero out the weight of your container. So what you'll do is put the empty container on your scale and then hit the zero out button to zero the weight so that when you add the rice seed back into this or whatever seed you're calibrating for back in there, you're only getting that weight and not the weight of the seed plus the container. Okay, once you get the calibration or get close, because the adjustments are gonna be so small, it'll be handy to have a ruler, one of these metric small metal rulers that you can put on the cog on the outside of the seed cup all the way against the edge of the seed cup. This number will actually be much more accurate than using the number off of the lever because in many cases there's a lot of play on these older drills. So it's always better to use this number. In this case, we're at 18 and a half millimeters. So we'll make small adjustments up or down 
depending on what our calibration weight gives us. Okay, once we get this side calibrated, we might have to make a couple of adjustments back and forth to get the, the weight that's specified on that calibration sheet. Once we've got that, we recommend that you go to the other side and do the other side as well. Carry that number that you get from that ruler to the other side, and rather than using the number off of the lever, use the number off that ruler, and that'll get you dialed in, dialed in a lot closer. Okay, once you get the grain drill calibrated, write your numbers on this magnetic sheet that Rice Tick will provide, and keep it with the drill. We recommend maybe putting it on the inside of the lid so you don't lose it, okay? It's also important that once you get out into the field, that you follow behind the drill periodically and check behind the drill to make sure that you're, you're still properly calibrated in the field, okay? Also, there's several other drills that follow this same type of format. You can calibrate those exactly the same way. It really all comes down to measuring the gauge wheel, getting that information in, and determining how much you need to catch based on the gauge wheel circumference and the row width, your row spacing. Once you get all that done, always be sure to check behind the drill. If you've got any questions, you can always contact your Rice Tech rep or your dealer.